Hey YouTube. All right, so today we are going to go ahead and start running our rows in the garden. So what we're doing is, um, I'm gonna make my rows about as wide as a manure shovel. Um, reason being is because I want it a little bit of space between it. So when it rains, um, it helps get a little bit more water to each of the plants. And then when it comes time for the weeds, we're gonna go ahead and use our attachment for the weed whacker um, to go ahead and actually control the weeds between the rows. So we actually used this last year. It was a nice little attachment. It worked good. So stay tuned and I will start showing uh, how we're gonna run these rows. Hey YouTube, this is Diana, Sean's wife, and showing some progress of the garden. So we got about half the rows done, maybe a little bit more. And we didn't string these because we're not running an actual tiller machine through it. We're just going to be running again the attachment for the weed whacker through here. So as you see, plenty of width to go through there, help cultivate it through the summer, keep the weeds down, and a lot less on the knees pulling weeds. Which is always a good idea. So once we get the plants in that I'm going to show you here, we'll show you what the garden looks like after the plants are in. So here are the plants that we're planning. We got them all lined up for the rows. We have them separated for the ones that don't like to be next to each other, furthest from each other, and kind of the ones that are transition or can kind of be closer or doesn't really matter at all is in the middle so it blends. So we're doing the companion gardening. And we have the sweet onions that were store bought in a project that's another video, as you can see right here. So those are gonna be planted. So we have a bunch of tomatoes. Then I'm gonna photo bomb. <laughs> this right here is my absolute favorite. When you're cutting the grass and you need a quick snack, these things are awesome to pop off the vine, put them in your lap and keep on cutting. So if you haven't tried chocolate pear tomatoes, definitely do it. <laughs> and no, we're not any kind of spokesperson for whoever created these, we just love them. They're just delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and we also had these last year that were pretty good. But those were definitely our the tomato the chocolate pear tomatoes were our favorite then we got some other tomatoes money makers san marzano uh get to try little lemon boy and big boy and then we have some yellow pear and then we also are super excited to try this pineapple tomato um says it's going to be about a two size fruit two pound size fruit so super interested in trying that one and if anybody has ever planted those if you have any information uh, tips anything about those we greatly appreciate it to help us and help anybody else who wants to try these yep, two post it in the comment yeah I'm definitely gonna have to show those suckers off we got some sunflowers carrots pepperoncinis, bell peppers onions some lettuces uh, broccoli cauliflower spaghetti squash zucchini um, Spaghetti squash, I think I said. <laughs> Summer squash, eggplant, pumpkins, cucumbers, watermelon, a couple varieties. Interested in trying this sangria variety. It says it's a very dark, sweet fruit. Some cantaloupes with a cantaloupe uh, honeydew hybrid, some beans and parsnips and turnips and of course corn because you got to have that so once we get these all planted in the ground we will be back well, then we can also uh the experience we have with that corn last year if anybody has any ideas or tips on that one too well we had a rough summer last one yeah that was rough which one was it um the peaches and cream yes yeah, so the peaches and cream actually i so, think we planted both last year this one was good but the texture wasn't all that great so could have been just because of a dry summer but if anybody has had any experience again with these if they've been good bad um just drop a drop a comment for us and uh give us give your ideas so we will be back once we have them in the ground all right so update we got the tomato plants in got the poles in so what we do instead of using tomato cages I've seen this a few times, put in the landscaping rods and then go ahead and take the twine and go weave it around your poles. So it kind of makes like this little scissor in the middle. 
and then as your tomato plants grow you can just go ahead and open this up they'll come through and as the height keeps getting higher and higher just add more strings and that way it'll keep your tomato plants from falling over and you don't have to fight those uh, tomato cages all the time so obviously these aren't tall enough yet to get to that point so that's the start of our tomatoes and I will continue the video once we get a few more in the ground all right and we're back uh, and everything is planted so we have everything we showed you earlier in the ground our tomato plants we have them started as far as being secured we have sunflowers we have lettuce pepperoncinis uh, broccoli cauliflower spaghetti squash zucchini some more squash um, not sure what that is I guess that's asparagus possibly pumpkins cucumber watermelon uh, what else we have over here um, some more it looks like that's a honeydew melon we got beans and we have a rose of corn so hopefully uh, we're gonna get a nice soaking rain tomorrow and then I think this coming week we're supposed to get a lot of rain so that's definitely gonna help all of this start to uh, start to grow but as you see, did the rows wide enough to be able to run that hand tiller through here. And that'll keep it cultivated, keep the weeds down. Uh, so everything turned out really good. So make sure you hit that uh, notification bell. And we will definitely be posting more videos on the progress of the garden and what we're growing. Especially those two-pound tomatoes. Looking forward to that. But that's it. It's been another beautiful Saturday in Pennsylvania. And that's it for today. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.